five right now. They're not as five. They sent Demon all the way down the bottom lane with a uh, little Mr. Grievel Courier. Thirty seconds to battle. So he's he's looking for some kind of advantage down there. He's, he, he just came to Planet Ward, so we can offlane this properly. Uh, but LGD five man moving into the Dinoside jungle. I can say we expected this, considering it's an Enigma game. So whenever that happens, you have to be able to get in there and ward up the enemy jungle. Surprisingly, though, they only plant down two wards. There's this one right here, which I'm fairly certain actually does block that. And I uh, really shouldn't have placed it. <laughs> it's <laughs> hopefully for them it does. It it, it looks a little off, it does. doesn't it? Because you it need does. you need to have it there or like that line somewhere around. It really it. should block there. I would be very surprised if it doesn't. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, we have introduced the Liquid lineup, so uh, let's have a look at the LGD squad. We've got Yao playing as the Doombringer, heading down towards the bottom lane. In mid lane, it's going to be Rabbit playing as the Dragon Knight. And then top lane, DD on the Treant, DDC on the Rubik, and Lin on the Mirana. And Treant got a haste level 1. That's like the best rune you can get. <laughs> and then straight to a smoke cake. They get a beat down on Goitfa. Temple of Assassin, now the Refraction is up with three defensive charges. But this doesn't really last too long, but they're going to come in anyway. So DDC, Telekinesis is going to have to drag it back. There's at least a Dragon Brew. Dragon Tail is also up, and that's going to be Koifer's death. There's nothing. DD has got the huge fist just pumping into him, but it's Rabbit that takes the first blood here in the middle lane. LGD off to a fantastic start. Trant Tra with a haste rune is like the scariest thing you can have running at you on level one. Trant and Gyro with haste runes are absolute nightmares to play against. Uh, Clockwork with ba battery assault is pretty scary too, but yeah. Easy kill for LGD, they get lucky on the rune and get off to a great start. But it's one thing getting lucky on the rune, it's, an, it's, a, it's a completely other thing to actually utilize it that well. So yeah. that's the highest value kill they can get on the map right now. Koikva is going to be winning this lane by default. Templar Assassin just beats Dragon Knight in lane, hands down. So giving Rabbit a good start here and securing him the first blood will give him his bottle very early on. And uh, of course, even his boots are already available now. Uh, and top lane, they are so <laughs> uh, they're so scared. They're so scared to come out. Like it, they know the combination can kill them straight away, and there's no real saving grace from the heroes here because Enigma's too busy inside the jungle. So it was a three v two situation on the top lane. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Demon got real or oh, DK taking a lot of damage uh, back behind the tower, 55 life points. Uh, this bottom lane, Yao managed to get himself a wild a wild king. He's already got his bonus armor going up against Demon. Now, Demon's trying to Gale him as well as do Poison Attack. Now, the Gale is really quite useless because it's level 1. And the slow is instantly broken by the Scorched Earth anyway because he has the movement speed gain from it. So, this Venomancer off lane, I mean, really interesting to see how, how uh, Jimmy wants to run it. Because the off laner, like, I almost want to subscribe to the Book of Trixie, which is like the high level Gale, high level Poison Sting, and you beat them head to head with, with the damage output. But at the same time, winning a damage output battle up against the Doombringer, good luck up that one. So, he's kind of going to move to the, to the next part of it, which is mass level of Plague Wards. And, and force out the lane that way. There are two solutions here for Demon. I think no matter which one he chooses, he should actually be winning the lane. Uh, right now, Doom is slightly ahead, but I think Doom is going to start losing out soon. So one is, like you said, going up heavily into Gale and Poison Sting. That's the beat the hero build. Yep. And the other one is beat the lane build, which is where he maxes Plague Wards, which Doom is absolutely awful against. And then he's slowly but steadily going to be taking the tower, either forcing a rotation from LGD or they will be losing a tower bottom. So he's going to go for the Plague Ward build, which I think is the better choice in this game. He wants to put pressure here and make sure that LGD don't get to push too much. And then he also has it for the defensive purposes, which you're playing against a Dragon Knight and uh, Treant. You're probably going to have to defend your towers pretty early on. So maxing out the wards is, is a really good call. Yeah. Man, this top lane, you see where Rubik's moving through? They've cut a small little path up here on, on the top lane. So he can actually get in range if anyone's just in this like lower box area. So he can get a telekinesis and there's the arrow over the tree line. So it's an unobstructed area where you can get almost like basically a guaranteed arrow with just the Rubik set up. Unfortunately for our LGD, Liquid aren't coming close, but also unfortunately for Liquid, they're not coming close. You've got, <laughs> you've got a Viper who is currently 5-2 farming on the top lane up against a 19-3 Marana. It's... This this lane is... their problems. Liquid cannot do anything in that lane. And I think the call from Way2 to go into the Radiant Jungle makes a lot of sense. If they manage to gank the Doom, that's probably a tower down. 
uh, in the f on the first gank, even though the tower has full health, if they manage to execute it with perfect timing and have creep support, yep. then they're going to be taking the tower. I'm assuming Demon will be sending down a ring of Basilius as well. He has the Sage's Mask from the beginning here. Uh, sending that down with the Courier now would be a great call so that they can start pushing the tower, but no, it looks like he will be going for fast tier 2 boots. Wondering if it's going to be Travis or Arcanes. Probably Arcane boots. I would assume Arcanes. And, well, if Way 2 doesn't accomplish anything down here, they're effectively losing top. The Doom is winning heavily against Venno, which is a little bit surprising to me. It's just, again, a great early game performance from LGD. They're winning on gold against an Enigma right now. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, I, I, I'm not quite sure. Okay, top lane, top lane. They're gonna have a crack. The arrow dodged by TC, but did he see? He's already used to like, he just bubble will come through for the extra stun. And Liquid are able to just split LGD's attention between the lanes. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm sitting on the other on the other side of the fence here on the bottom lane. If you get your aura creep straight from the start, Scorch that's gonna deal with any kind of damage which is dealt initially by the harassment from the poison sting, which is what Jimmy level up first. And then you go for a level 1 Gale. Now, there's no damage coming out from that. So the only thing you're doing is basically slowing. And Yao's got movement speed from Scorched Earth, so he's like, and boots. So he's okay with that. And he just keeps devouring. So technically, there's no killing potential on this bottom lane. And the Enigma, you're talking like way too doing something. He had to get his Soul Ring up and running, because he was moving around inside the Radiant Jungle, like you were saying that, with only maybe like 50 to 100 mana. And that's not enough to really do anything as an enigma. Even when he comes to the lane right now, he has to be careful about how much mana he's got because the black hole cost of 250 mana, that's basically everything he has. All right, but here we go. If they can't do it with Enigma alone, just just bring a friend. He, he does. Well, he has a Raid King, but I'm pretty sure friends are going to arrive for LGD pretty quickly too. Living Armor is about to come off cooldown in two seconds' time, and Yao's already popped the Scorch Earth, moves inside the tree line, and there's three heroes coming under, and here comes your TP support. The Doom goes on Bulba, and he was there, their second stun. It was literally it. There's a Malibus on over in the corner. Way too, he's got to use the conversions to block out Yao at this point. He's on the run out. Rabbit, Dragon Town, not enough mana for it. He goes for the Poison Attack, and Way too is on the run out here on the bottom lane. But Yao out right behind him. There goes your arcane boots, which means breeze fire now available for Rabbit. So his TP is well worth it. It's three for zero now on the board. And what was a very aggressive gang from Liquid is completely shut down. Unfortunately for Liquid, the way the lane was positioned when they started moving down there allowed Yao to pick up on the fact that they couldn't come in from the back and then just get into the tree line. Let's imagine Yao was out here when the gang comes from the flank here. He just dies before any support can come in. But yep. Liquid here, in this in this case, just make a, a pretty... I wouldn't say it's a bad call to go for the gank because it, it, was a, it was a good idea and they needed to do that to secure the tower, but the execution of it and the timing was just off and LGD mm. are exploiting that to get a level 8 Doom, soon to have a mech as well. And by the way, he went for Arcane Boots, so he's not worried about running out of mana for the Scorched Earth at any point. Top lane, they have some fun with TC. The arrow flew astray here. Bubble coming for the Sun of Frontier Protector. He needs to get this living armor up pretty quickly, but then again, nature's guys is a wonderful thing. Here we go, Invis and TP himself out to safety with no mana left. Yeah, I don't, how, are we, how are we looking for the mid lane? So that's... Um, TA is doing good. That's the upside for Liquid. He's, he's going for a Midas on uh, on TA as it looks. I don't know if this is a Midas game. I think if, if Koikva is not able to fight and have an impact early on, they're going to lose towers. It's going to be similar to the previous game where they have a Naga they need to wait for, and they wait and wait and wait and wait. Naga comes online and the game ends. Yeah. If Midas, TA in this game does not get space, we're going to have the same story where Koikva is getting good farm, but if he if they can't buy the time frame, it's, it's, it's going to be in vain. Middle lane, they're about to have an initiation if TA waits a little bit longer, but I like the position here of Koifa's traps. He's managed to get three traps up here on the high ground. Okay, well, well, now just now just two. Um, but his vision is really nice to watch those initiating points from the Marana. Like, most of the arrows you throw out here will go that direction or will go that direction. And that comes in from the sides and, and uh, gets around the creep wave to hit Koifa. So he's got a real real good job of the positioning wise. Meanwhile on the bottom lane, DD and DDC, they're smoked up, they're coming in, and I don't believe Demon can escape from this. Like this is his death. Yeah, Dragon Knight's gonna port bottom as well. Not really good to secure this kill, <laughs> which they already have, but he's porting down there to start pushing out the wave so that they can secure the tower. And we already see the ping coming out from Liquid. Okay, we have to try to get a trade mid, guys. This bottom tower, there's four heroes down here, one of them being Dragon Knight with Elder Dragon form ready. They have a train protector to keep him running. There's a Doom there as well. And even the Rubik, who is now level five, so level three Fade Bolt can actually do a lot of damage and prevent Liquid from fighting. So mm -hmm. they'll try to get the trade mid, but Rubik actually just decided, okay, well, top lane, I'll TP back. Top lane, there goes, uh, there goes the Viper. Did Lin solo him? Yes, he 
did. It was an arrow, it was a starfall with the leap straight after, straight before that, and then tried to moonlight and shadow himself out there. But yes, he just soloed the Viper. He's going to be really happy with that trade off. Even though he died, Dyer's getting a core kill for him, and attack. yes, Lick would get a trade back, but they get it with two supports. I think he's going to be perfectly fine. And that Dyer's kill also secured that Liquid did absolutely no tower damage in the top lane. Yep. So and they, they just traded a tier one tower for a kill. And they or had no defense a tower whatsoever kill, on the bottom lane. LGD freely walked up towards that tower and Liquid were too busy trying to find a trade off. I feel like this is when Liquid, uh, when LGD are at their best, when they draft like this. When they have a Dragon Knight, when they have the early tank ability and they start pushing towers early on. That's kind of their biggest strength. We've seen them in, in the qualifiers as well. We saw them running lineups with Pugna and just ending games at about the 20-25 minute mark. The, the previous game was very reminiscent of that. And You know, in this tournament, a lot of the teams have been playing fairly greedy. Dyer's and that's also why we've seen Vici just attack. picking these lineups just, just maul down the base in like 15 minutes. And they, you know what, it kind of tells the story when you're, when you're playing those attack. lineups that Vichy has been doing and executing them like they have and they finish on top of the board, it kind of tells you about what strategies you need to use Dyer's to defeat the metagame right now that the attack. other teams have been playing. Because Vichy haven't been playing like everyone else. Mm -hmm. They've just been like, okay, you guys attack. want to farm? We'll take your base at 15. Like, <laughs> where's, where's your farm now? <laughs> and LGD kind of following that same pattern, not to the extreme extent that Vichy Gaming did, but... Yeah. It's, it's, it's more of like this this perfect time push kind of thing. It's like, you want to wait for a 15 minute time push, we come in at 10. Koitfa, he broke the smoke. They have nowhere to run into him with uh, with a blink dagger, but they do have Rabbit on that haste route. He could have gone for the Dragon Tail stun, but they just let it go. It's the tier one tower is the primary thing LGD came here for. If they got a pick off on the way, not a problem. But they let Yao do the free farming in the bottom Dyer's lane while they take map control. Attack. And with the Dragon form out, it's just too easy. There's even movement coming from behind. Yeah, he's looking at Koifa, but nothing is going to come from anything here for it's going to be too team. late. They smoked up and they tried to get really? rid Actually, maybe not. Way too. Look for that black hole of his. He's going to come in through the rear. The Gale is out. The Midnight Pulse. Well, DDC really, really low on life. They get the kill on the Rubik very quickly. While up on the high on the high ground, DD going to TP out. Koifa, no stun available. They have nothing to do anything against him. And Rubik will go down. That was more than a month what I thought like, we were going to get during that fight. LGD are really good at disengaging. It was the same as the previous game. Whenever they got themselves into a bad position, they know how to get out of it. They sacrificed the Rubik for a tower. Dyer's Excellent trade from them. Now Liquid have to get something They're going out of for this. Roshan. They'll go for Rosh. I think this is the best call they can make. I'm sure LGD know this. But yeah, they're actually not that good at fighting in the pit. This could be huge for Liquid if they manage to pull it off. They have Black Hole ready. They have a lot of Plague Wards in position. Viper Strike is ready. Dragon Form's wearing off too. This Add is not the out. greatest time for LG to fight, but they'll give it a shot. In comes Rabbit. Moonlight Shadow. Black Hole catches Yao as well as Rabbit. Oh, Black stolen. Hole! No, it was oh, Viper it's Strike! He got Viper Strike sending it back in again, but look at the damage! Lin jumps in the Starfall damage. Liquid have lost basically everybody here. The tree and Aldi held him there. Triple kill for Lin. And it's might even be an ultra kill. Bulba dying inside. DD will take that one. And now Roshan, there are the Plague Wards in here which they should probably get rid of before they finish Roshan, just in cases. But they can't take out Roshan. DK picks up the Aegis of the Immortal. Liquid lose four inside the pit. That even, even if DDC didn't take the Black Hole, man, LGD hit so hard when they came in then. And the problem is that Liquid, actually, that was a, it was a pretty okay Black Hole, but their lineup yeah. doesn't have damage yet. That's, they, mm -hmm. they get a Black Hole, but they get it on tanky heroes, and there's a Trend Protector Dyer's and a Mech. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't know if they could have hoped for a better black hole than that, but they could have hoped for a better position and a better setup, where instead of instantly blowing the black hole, perhaps they do some chip damage first and, and get in, into a better position and, and start damaging LGD down a little bit. But they actually thought they could get away with that, and there's just no way against this LGD lineup. The early mech really paying off here from the Doom, who, in my opinion, got a way better game than he should have. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to that, the Treant with level 4 living armor and the overgrowth just uh, dropping Liquid Dyer's completely dead there. <laughs> 4 for nil, Roche as well. Radiant's this game could be even faster attack. than the first one, I'm afraid, for Liquid. Yeah, things are spiraling out of control and like... What 13 are we, what minute Shadow Blade. Yes. <laughs> with Treads, Sir, Bottle and Wand. Not too shabby What's for a DK. Oh my gosh. 6 net worth on a Dragon Knight at 13 minutes. <laughs> Doombringer is the only attack. one that's in front of him, but it's, it's on a DK and a Doombringer who is safe lane farming with level 4 Devour. And DK is keeping up with him. Now, Koitfa, this is my question, and your question which you asked before. What is he bringing to this, to this fight? He's got Midas and he's got Treads. I'm not looking at Blink Daggers, I'm not looking at Early Desolators, I'm not looking at anything coming out from the Templar Assassin, which has any kind of impact or makes LGD have 
a sl even a slight amount of concern about him. It's uh yeah, it's just a situation right now where Liquid doesn't have anything which intimidates LGD. And LGD has everything that intimidates Liquid. The black hole is nothing, as you said, without any kind of damage follow-up. And you don't have damage follow-up until Templar Assassin has high points of damage. And you can't rely on Refraction and Meld every single team fight to get you through the entire thing. And the question is, if, if Liquid somehow managed to stall out this game, I, I think, again, this is just, this is not good enough from Liquid. They're farming the Ancients with the Venno, who needs to be seeing that this push will be coming and have the pl Plague Wards in position. He just sacrificed a lot of their tower's health for getting some Ancients. He could have been here and have put like th four or five Plague Wards and been ready to defend, but mm -hmm. instead Liquid are just going to concede another tower because they're just too late on the rotation. Yep. It's a, an, it's oh, a coming really out. big problem. Hellfire Blast, but he actually pops a Shadow Blade. Yeah, Hellfire Blast is stolen by DDC. Oh, At least they get the deny. Good play by TC here, but it's kind but, of... But they're losing the top tier 2 tower. Lin's up here is Solo Marana, just pushing it out. He's got the Great Wave under control, and the rest of LGD. They're just moving from, like, objective to objective. And the objective isn't taking out Liquid. That is pri Like, this is, this is PvE right now, but there's a couple of minions on the field. That's the way LGD is playing this game. Dyer's top tower has fallen. There's one tower left on the map at 15 minutes for Liquid, and they aren't even close to claiming one themselves with an Enigma lineup. They haven't got close. They have Enigma and Venno, who was a core Venno, and at 15 minutes they had dealt half the damage to the bottom tier, tier 1 tower. Yeah. That's it. And they're playing against a Trance, so if they don't bring it down in one go, then LGD don't really care, they just heal it up. So, well, Liquid... Saying they're on the back foot I actually think is an understatement. They're kind of already falling over. Yeah. Um... They need, they need to prop themselves back up again, but... It just seems like there's a disconnect in their strategy here. Like, what they picked and how they're playing it doesn't make sense. They, the Midas and TA, for me, tells me that Koifa feels like they absolutely Dyer's have to just hold... Is under attack. They have to hold on to the hope that they get to late game and that he can have an impact because the early game is falling apart. And the rest of their draft is actually tailored to take towers, which they haven't even got close to in the early game. Mm -hmm. LGD have always been one step ahead and have been making the right calls. And, yeah, in contrast attack. to Liquid, LGD are just playing the lineup. They're really doing exactly what they have to do. Yep. It's their comfort zone. And LGD, that's the last tower bottom. It's going to go down. Rabbit in the Elder Dragon form with Aegis up. I wouldn't be surprised if LGD actually tried to the ground now. I know it's wrong, but... Denied. denied by Venom. <laughs> he had three Plague Wards to choose from then. <laughs> he may just get the timing right for it. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Sin. What? I, no, I, I no. Don't, I don't. I was actually I was looking for something else, but I, I I'm really good. struggling to like clutch the hope here. I'm really struggling to clutch the hope for uh, for for Team Liquid. Like through all the games they've played, they've been so inventive. They've been they've been so aggressive. It's been played so well. But now Volva, well, Sentry Ward reveals a horrible, horrible fact that he's got a DK in front of him and a three on the other side. Gale will come out. Venomance will hold the ball. There goes your reincarnation. There's a good ultimate coming out from Jimmy. Way too. Looking for his ultimate as well, but the tree only will keep him back for now. Bulba, low on life, and Rabbit just stands his ground. Actually, Coin for being the man to be doomed up at the moment, and he is ticking out all the damage, and there's your bounce out. Lin, well, way too sexy. He's going to go down. It's just the Mirana standing on the edge. The black hole will hold him there, but that was all it was. And considering that fight started with LGD basically at half a life, then the mech came up. Venomance so are the only man to survive through it all. Yeah, life is hard. I don't think Liquid can hope for a much better engage than that one. The one thing that could have gone better for them was that Koikfa didn't get doomed. The best thing that could have happened was Venno dropping everything and yep. and then Yao dooming Venno, but Yao's not going to do that. <laughs> it would have been a bad play, and, and Yao doesn't make bad plays, as it seems. At least not in this series. He's been he's been pretty much on the spot. He hasn't died yet in the series. Like, he played the Invoker in the first game, 3-0-6. He's now 2-0-9, and, and in both... He has been playing very well in his lanes as well, so has really perhaps been the big player for, for LGD, although it's it's he's kind of a big player among a lot of other big players, so I, I, I wouldn't say he has stood out incredibly much, but maybe slightly ahead in terms of overall game impact in this in this series, but like all of LGD in this game are just absolutely cruising. It's very rare to see in an 18 minute game that has a Doom on the, on the position one, that Mirana is actually ahead on net worth. Mm -hmm. Lin has seven kills, 100 CS in an 18 minute game. He's gone Maelstrom, Bulba's Yasha, Antrum, and Bulba, well, he, he went out to war. He's, he's dead. This might be his last he, he one was, of the tournament. He was right underneath the observer oh. ward. All right, he still has a chance to place another ward this tournament. <laughs> He has one in his inventory. 
And I doubt this is really the objective he is looking to achieve during the game, though, Sin. But either way, they were looking like they were coming down in pretty damn fast. But Lin, I, I, I'm really like... He's actually been like the unsung hero when it comes to the team fights, and he kind of like the net worth will show him. He's the first man to hit 10,000. He actually uses a higher net worth than the Doom of the DK. Uh, but it's the fact that like, he just sits there, popping off Maelstrom procs, getting all the damage he wants to, start falling down as well multiple times during the fights, and Liquid ignoring him because they're too worried about the DK and the Doom, the two huge tanks which still pump out a lot of damage and a lot of disable. Like Liquid, like, there are actually too many priority targets for Liquid to try and get rid of. That's the problem. And uh, uh, getting either of them is going to be hard because of living armor. So, yep. And Koif is that. actually going to go for a BKB. Oh boy. I kind of felt like this was like an all-in kind of thing. You had to go for a Desolator in this game and try and find some early kind of pickoff. He's just going to get doomed. Yep. It's not going to matter at all, I think. This, this BKB is going to be pretty useless. I'm not going to say it's a bad item choice. Because if he doesn't have it, he's just going to get controlled by something else. Demon. The problem They're is that chasing forced him. into it. Dragon okay, Tail is and what are you doing? He oh, was going for a stroll, tending to Cindy Group down the middle lane. He was just trying to get a nice little frontal position with a couple of Plague Wards, but Rabbit just went to Shadow Blade, Dragon Form into the Dragon Tail's done. Ruby gets to take his Plague Wards now. And that means that the front position is, is planned by LGD. That even allowed Ruby to afford his 20 minute Blink Dagger. And Doombringer has a 20 minute Shiva's Mech Arcane's drums. There is so much money in this LGD lineup. And they're going high ground. The tier 3 towers being whittled away. Fortification will slow down the pressure. But the Plague Wards from DDC are giving the front line to LGD. And you're seeing now the fortification wears off. Arrow with the Bulba. He still doesn't have ultimate available. Like, the reincarnation is not an option for him. Now, TC also just threw in his ultimate. And you can guarantee that uh, DDC, after he feels he's got enough Plague Wars down the field, he'll be looking for Viper. Okay, so I wasn't sure how good this Rubik, Rubik was going to be in their, in their kind of early game pressure push strategy. I mean, if you steal Plague Wards, he's pretty good, right? Then <laughs> yep. Just... Radiant structures yeah, the, the problem is that that happened. Demon actually cannot allow that to happen until mid-fight. He needs to stand so far back that he's out of spell steal range and just dropping the Plague Wards, but because he went outside of the base, he allowed Rubik to actually steal it and telekinesis him, so... That's the first range Rex down for uh, for Team Liquid. They're gonna have to do whatever they can to hold on. But the problem for me is, the longer they hold on, it's not like they're coming back into the game. They don't have massively better late game, whereas in the previous game they had like a Naga that they could hope for. In yep. this game, they have a TA and a Viper. A Viper who, mind you, is extremely underfarmed. He has a, a GPM of less than... What is it? 250 he has a GPM of. 258. The second lowest in the game is on the Viper. It's, um... It's pretty difficult being liquid right now. I, you know, when you're in this kind of position in the game, you generally tend to go for Hail Mary plays, but since they're playing for half a million dollars, they might not do that. And that might actually be a worse idea to not do that. Like, if they don't just try something crazy now, they, they will lose this game. There is there is no other way than smoking up, going for a gank, maybe getting that, some miracle, getting a five-man black hole, and maybe getting a Roche. That's half a comeback. That's, if they do that, that's half yeah. coming. They're 20,000 gold behind at 22 minutes, so... That, that'll be stage one of a, st of a 10 stage plan. That's what they what it would be here. But LGD, they're the ones coming in for Rojan now. The TA trap can perfectly see what's going on. There's no Sentry Tour gem surprisingly being put, put, purchased up here by LGD, which means Liquid do have some good vision. So they're going to smoke themselves up. They're coming around, but there's also Observer Wars down all across the field. So they're looking to see where Team Liquid are going to come in from. Sentry Wars on the pit as well. So now the TA traps are gone. And Liquid have wasted too much time. We've got Plague Wards versus Plague Wards. That's almost like the ultimate battle going on next to the ancient area. And now it's two versus one. That's just not fair. And Liquid will try and wrap around here. I'm imagining this is the last ditch effort for them, from them. They I know if this doesn't work out, the game will end. They can't kill Dragon Knight. Like, if they go on Dragon Knight, the game ends. So they have to go on Ooh, someone else. He has Plague 2,500 Ward. health. J sorry, Jim, oh, Jimmy okay. threw, he threw a play ward out, and they, they, they saw him from behind, and now the jump in, Yao, he actually gets scaled, Viper striked, and now he's just standing there and tanking his course, that's gone, and TC being picked up and thrown back, Void for the BKB, moving quite freely, but Bulba almost down straight away, and Lin, just the lightning maelstrom prop, he got the first kill out, the Viper buys back instantly, but they wait for Bulba to reincarnate back up again, searching for more kills on him, Koifa, he's doomed, he BKB'd and doomed, and had to run himself back out again. And they focus now onto the melee ranks. The Moonlight Show is giving some level of cover fire here. 
The Sentry Ward's also down the high ground. That's the gem from from uh, from Pegasus, which is showing it out. And Fishing Arrow. The melee ranks are still alive for now, but LGD, there's no reason why they have to fall back. Even with the buyback that came out from the Viper, there's no reincarnation, and they're still a very, very strong team, even without their ultimates. There's still Poison Nova, though, and Elder Dragon form is running out, so I think okay. they're going to wait for the next one. It's, it's a minute away. Uh, reincarnation will obviously not be up for the next three and a half minutes, so they did accomplish that. They forced the buyback, like you said, and they didn't really use anything apart from that. They used Doom, which will be available in 50. So will the Dragon form. Like The, the timing of their ultimates just aligned perfectly here with, uh, with Doom and Dragon Knight. Of course, their cooldowns are also very similar, so not too hard to, to time that, but... You know, they're just, they're controlling the map anyway. There's no risk for them in not going away. The amount of harm they have is incredible. It's side blade damage. It went up from Roshan and hit into DDC. It's the instant flag that Liquid are inside the pit. And Rabbit sitting right next to way too picked up, throwing down Breeze Fire with the Sheiky Cars while Quirk is gone. They get snapped back and GG, 25 minutes in. 17 to 4. I really feel like this best of three didn't do Team Liquid any kind of justice. They played so well throughout the international that I feel sad that this is their final best of three. Best Still, of three. at the end of the day, in a tournament like this, when it's big games, you have to pull out the big performances. True. So, you're right, they've been playing better through the through the rest of the tournament, but there also hasn't been the same amount of pressure on them as in this one. This was one of the really important games, and I think the pressure just completely got to them. Um, they, were not, they were not ready for this kind of game today. It's just LGD are 